G'day guys, hey, it's John here. Welcome to my mess. I'm messing around with a couple scopes here, doing some uh, testing and comparison. And that's kind of sidelined right now, it's dark outside. So what I want to talk to you about is uh, safety. Now, with these uh, matches, safety is a very big concern. We have a lot of guys in the same area and we are shooting essentially weapons. We don't necessarily look at them as weapons in a match, but they are our tool for competing. But each of these tools has the ability to take somebody's life. So it is something we have to take very seriously. And coming into the winter here, uh, colder hands, lack of... Uh, our reduced feeling and control of your trigger finger guys wearing heavy gloves triggers and light triggers is a topic that comes to my mind and i'd like to address it briefly today um if you're running a trigger that is overly light and you're running a thick glove you cannot feel that trigger and if you're on a barricade and as you go into your trigger guard get your finger on the trigger if your round goes off before you were on target and it hits, let's say it hits 100 yards in front of you and that target is 200 yards away, that is a negligent discharge. You are not in control of your weapon. So it is very important that the trigger weight on your rifle is heavy enough that you can feel it. So when you put your heavy gloves on, you can feel that trigger. When you're going into that trigger guard and you catch with your heavy gloves, that your rifle does not go off. Because if it goes off, you were not in control. So it is a very important topic for us to consider. The other thing is, with guys going to lighter and lighter triggers, um, if your rifle would fall, there is a possibility of it going off. Now the rifle should never fall with a loaded round in the chamber under matched circumstances, but it is possible if one of the other safety rules is not being followed. And that is something that is very easy for any of us to test. And I'm just gonna do that for you here. I'm gonna demonstrate with a few of my rifles and show you that you can entirely have a fairly light trigger that is safe. But if you go too far, it is not going to be safe. And I have, I've done this before and I have had triggers that were too light and they were not safe, so I had to increase the weight on them. All right, chamber's clear, and then close the bolt. Once again, it's a uh, caulking, so it's caulked, and we'll drop it from two feet again. So about like so. Oh my. Why did you That's awfully hard on our rifle, isn't it? Well, let's see. Is it safe? The uh, safety on it was on, so put it back off. And see? So even dropping bolt side with a, it's just over a pound trigger. It's a pound and, oh, I always forget the ounces, but a pound and a quarter. The uh, rifle was safe. I was hard on my really cheap uh, bubble level here. Should have taken that off before I demonstrated this but this is crucial can you hit a bolt and not have your firing pin drop and will the um, trigger release under a, uh, a shock load so let us uh, move on here Good one. so this is the uh, shall we call it famous uh, rebar ruger um, if you're going to do this on one of these uh, Rugers, be sure to collapse the buttstock all the way. I did not do that the first time I performed this test on this rifle, and it uh, it was hard on the uh, big notches here where it clamps. So I don't recommend doing that. So we will. We will collapse the buttstock all the way. We're, we're hard on hard right down. And I'm going to lock it into this position for this test. So once again, I'm going to 
check that it's clear. And uh, we have an empty chamber. We are going to close the bolt, it's cocked, and break the trigger. So, here we are, safety off, and it's cocked. So we will drop it now. So we're at the two feet, and here goes. Oh, man, sounds wicked, doesn't it? I'm scared uh, I broke it. <clears throat> Right there you can see the uh, uh, stock, top part of the chassis, this here uh, plastic broke out. Anyhow, it's just a Ruger. The question is, the rifle broke, but did it fire? And as you can see, this is perfectly safe. I can drop this rifle. And I do not have to worry about the firing pin dropping. Once again, I'm running this trigger right around one and a half pounds. If I take this one down to one pound, I cannot do this test even from 16 inches without the firing pin dropping. And I personally would feel that would render this an unsafe firearm. Okay, so it's the next day. Chassis has been fixed up with a bit of JB Weld. So we're ready to go to the match. We verified that mechanically this is a safe trigger. I have the trigger set so that in the event that the rifle should fall, it will not go off. Now, that does us no good if when we get to the match, we do not exercise um, proper trigger control mentally and physically. So coming into the winter months here, it's cold. We're gonna have a uh, fair number of winter matches this winter and staying warm is a big factor in being able to enjoy a match in the winter time so heavy gloves they're the norm but you're not going to be wearing these heavy gloves to actually shoot the stage it is not safe to do so because you cannot feel that trigger if you're going to run a five pound trigger yes you might be able to feel the trigger to uh, be safe but you gotta take these big gloves off. So what I would recommend guys doing is have your big over gloves underneath run a light glove and pull these off. Now I got the thumbs pull cut off and my trigger fingers. So I can shoot either support side or strong side. And this is gonna keep my hands warm enough for a two minute stage or three minutes, whatever we need. And I'm gonna be able to feel the trigger and I'm going to be able to safely um, use this system to compete without jeopardizing somebody's safety. So ditch those big thick gloves, run a light pair, or run no gloves. That's up to you, doesn't matter. All right, so now you're at the position where you're going to actually shoot a stage. You're given the command to load and make ready. So magazine in, and we're ready to roll. And we are going to practice safe trigger control. So grip on the rifle, I'm maintaining a positive control finger outside of the trigger guard. I've been uh, given the command to engage, move up, place my bag, place my system. I'm on target. The whole time, my hand, I have control of the rifle finger outside. I'm on target, close the bolt. Now first thing, grip. And we have an impact. Cycle the bolt, grip, finger in, and we have an impact. Bolt back. We are going to transition. For me, this is how I transition. Now, I'm gonna close the bolt. I'm gonna fine tune to my target and the finger in, and we're good. And this does not have to take much time at all. You do not have the argument that this is costing you time because this is one case where safety does not cost you time. All right, try a close up of this. I'm gonna get the mag in here again and uh, find the target. Okay, so part of exercising safe trigger control actually works in your favor for consistent trigger pulls and a consistent grip on the rifle. And a consistent grip is very important for positional accuracy and, and prone as well. 
but it's really going to show up in positional. So do not stick your finger in first. You're gonna grip the rifle first. You're going to have a consistent grip on the rifle every time. Trigger finger out, and we're going to find our target. Once I'm on target, or in the um, very near vicinity of the target, then I'll come up, I'll close the bolt, my grip again, and now I'm going to find, it. now I'm aiming center of the plate down there, and then I'm gonna move my trigger finger in. And by doing the grip first, consistently, when I bring my trigger finger in, I have the angle I want on my finger, I'm going to hit the trigger the same place every time, and I'm gonna get an impact. Grip, finger in, impact. Grip, and you're going to say, well, what size targets are you shooting down there? Well, I'm actually shooting three inch targets in case you're wondering. This little system does not take much time. It's just simply practice. Consistent grip, finger in when on target, and press the go button. So let's each of us as competitors take the initiative. Let's train safe trigger control. Let's get this second nature so we do not have to think about it while in a match environment and on the clock. Exercising safe trigger control is not going to cost us time. It's not going to cost us points. But the results of not being safe could not be good. While in a match, if an ND does happen, it has to be taken care of. We cannot afford to have a culture created where it was like, meh, it was headed in a safe direction. If you did not intend for that round to go off then, that's on you. That's negligence. And we cannot afford to have that happen. So let's each of us take ownership when that happens. It could happen to any one of us. And it's let's take ownership. Let's deal with it. Let's create a safe culture where everyone can enjoy the event. I think that in a nutshell is my thoughts. Thank you for stopping by and listening in on this, I guess, one-sided discussion. But it's something that has been uh, rolling through my mind and I thought I would put a video out and address it because I feel very strongly about this topic. And until next time, hopefully at a match, we'll see you and stay safe.